fighter jets. Warships. Troops. As the threat of an all-out war between Iran, its armed allies in the Middle East, and Israel looms large, Western partners of Tel Aviv double down on boosting theirs as well as Israel's defenses in the region. A day after the United States announced it would be deploying fighter jets and cruisers as well as destroyers that can shoot down ballistic missiles to the Middle East to help Israel defend itself from possible attacks by Iran. The United Kingdom said it would send additional military personnel to the region. In a presser, the Pentagon said US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has ordered adjustments to American military posture designed to improve Washington's force protection and to increase support for the defense of Israel. The Secretary will be directing multiple forthcoming fo force posture moves to bolster force protection for US forces region-wide to provide elevated support to the defense of Israel and to ensure the United States is prepared to respond to this evolving crisis. In addition to troop deployment, the UK has stepped up preparations for a possible evacuation of British citizens from Lebanon in the aftermath of last week's assassinations in Beirut and Tehran, killings blamed on Israel that threatens to transform the war in Gaza into a region-wide conflict. The foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office and the Ministry of Defence said in a statement on August 3rd that consular experts, border force officials and military personnel have been deployed to the region as part of planning for a range of possible conflict scenarios. While the UK is not expecting an imminent need to evacuate citizens from Lebanon, as per a report by The Observer, the decision to put forces on standby comes after a meeting on August 2nd between Defence Secretary John Healy and his Israeli counterpart, Yov Gallant, during a visit to the region by Healy and the Foreign Secretary, David Lamy. The two sides, reportedly, discussed plans to create a coalition to safeguard Israel from Iran and its allies. On August 3rd, the Keir Starmer-led government also repeated a call for British nationals in Lebanon to leave while commercial options are still available, joining the US and several other countries. Dozens of companies have suspended flights to Lebanon and Israel in the past week. Meanwhile, the United Kingdom Maritime Trade Operations, or UKMTO, on August 3rd said it had received a report of a distress signal from a vessel proceeding 170 nautical miles southwest of the Yemeni port of Aden as Houthis continue to target ships belonging to Israel and its allies in protest of the war on Gaza. The Middle East and the wider world have held their breath since the killing of two top leaders of Iran's allies Hezbollah and Hamas. While confirming that Hamas's political chief Ismail Haniyeh was killed by Israel using a short-range projectile. Launched from outside of his accommodation in Tehran, Iran has vowed to avenge Haniyeh's assassination warning Tel Aviv would receive a severe punishment at the appropriate time, place and manner. It added that Israel was supported by the US in the attack. <laughs> این عکس العمل رو داشته باشیم این برای ما بسیار تلخ است که مهمان عزیز ما در خانه ما به شهادت برسه و ما رو داغدار و عزادار دوران بزن و در رو تمام شده این رو ما در عمل نشان داده ایم ما حواسمون هست میدانیم که همه این مسئولیت ها و این حوادث به عهده آمریکا جنایتکار هست هیچ اتفاقی بدون هماهنگی و بدون حمایت آمریکا جنایتکار اتفاق نمیفته a report by Axios citing three U.S. and Israeli officials claims that the Iranian attack on Israel is expected to come on August 5th. Haniyeh's death came just hours after Israel said it killed Fuad Shuka, the top military commander of Lebanon's Hezbollah, in a strike that killed civilians as well, including children. 
Within Lebanon, Prime Minister Najib Mikati condemned the blatant Israeli aggression describing the assassination as a criminal act in a series of aggressive operations killing civilians in clear and explicit violation of international law. Hezbollah said it will respond to the enemy's actions. وبيننا وبينكم الأيام والليالي والميدان. The permanent mission of the Islamic Republic of Iran to the United Nations told CBS News in an exclusive on August 2nd that Hezbollah would begin deliberately targeting Israeli civilians, claiming that it had not done so until now. Meanwhile, Israel has warned Iran and its allies against attacks targeting Tel Aviv or its citizens. מסר שלנו לכל המזרח התיכון השבוע. אנחנו מי שתוקף אזרחי ישראל, מי שתוקף את מדינת ישראל, אנחנו מוכנים ללכת רחוק, יודעים להתאמץ מאוד, להביא מודיעין מאוד מדויק, ללכת, לפגוע, להרוג וגם לקחת סיכונים. ותקפנו בבירות ואנחנו תוקפים בעזה ואנחנו נהיה מאוד חזקים בהגנה ואחר כך גם נתקוף מאוד חזק. The Yemeni Houthis, who are part of the Iran-led axis of resistance, expressed their condolences to Hamas and Hezbollah while calling for a military response against Israel. خطيرة ووجهة وتصعيد كبير من جانب العدو الإسرائيلي هناك مواقف واضحة ومعلنة بالنسبة للجمهورية الإسلامي Amid the escalation rhetoric, the US, which has politically, diplomatically, militarily and financially backed Israel's months-long war on Gaza, said it hopes Iran would stand down. Do you think Iran will stand down? Do you The U.S. has reiterated that its goals are a ceasefire in Gaza and regional de-escalation. Our support for Israel's security remains ironclad, and it's unwavering against all Iran-backed threats, including those from Hezbollah. No nation can be expected to tolerate the kind of severe threats that Israel is facing. At the same time, uh, we believe uh, that there is still time and space for a, a diplomatic solution here. Experts have accused Israel of sabotaging ceasefire talks with Hamas by assassinating the Palestinian armed group's chief negotiator. If Israel and Iran as well as Hezbollah were to clash, this wouldn't be the first time this would happen. While Hezbollah and Israel have exchanged cross-border fire almost on a daily basis since October 7th, the two fought a war in 2006, apart from several skirmishes over the years. Iran and Israel have been fighting a proxy war for years now. The two rivals engaged in a conflict as recently as April this year, when an Israeli attack killed two Iranian generals at Tehran's consulate in Damascus. Tehran retaliated with a missile and drone barrage, most of which were intercepted by Israel and its allies the US, UK, Jordan and France. Just like this time around, the US military had intensified deployments to the Middle East prior to Iran's attack in April. A report by Waller claims that Michael Eric Kurilla, the commander of US Central Command, arrived in the Middle East on August 4th to prepare a coalition to counter such threats. However, the threat from Hezbollah in Lebanon could present unique challenges to any efforts by Washington to intercept drones and missiles, given the group's vast arsenal and immediate proximity to the Jewish state. On August 3rd, Hezbollah said it had launched dozens of Katyusha rockets at Israel, the latest in a series of attacks it says is in support of the Palestinian people, raising fears of a full-blown war that is most likely to embroil not just the region but the world.